Hey, welcome back. Uh, back here to look at the uh, the compact survival kit I was going to put together for throwing on the back of the motorcycle well, to fit in the tailback. And I've been working on moving some stuff around that I've already got and creating a couple smaller, like tens of things that uh, should work well. Um, focused around like a 72 hour uh, time frame. A uh, couple things that I'm still working on um, uh, water. Um, I'm still trying to get the final decision. You know, do I do purification? Do I do um, like a, uh, a kit like this with the nesting cup to boil um, or the grail? which has been awesome, by the way, since I got it. Uh, it's, I'm really on the, on the point that this might be the only thing I throw in this kit. I mean, it's on the bike with me anyway. doesn't matter. It's always there. Uh, so I'm not even really putting this in or on or attached to the bag in any way because it's already with me on the bike. Um, but a couple things, uh, again... Built around a 72, not so much for, you know, camping. You know, if I'm out camping, I've got that whole gear anyway. This is meant for, I'm going out on a day ride and I get a flat and someone can't get to me. Or I'm really remote and it's going to take them a day or two to get there. This will get me through two nights and hopefully by then um, I can receive some help. Um so let's take a look at some of this gear and I'll show you the, the initial bag that everything fits in. And I'm waiting on one key piece and that's the shelter piece. I had ordered it earlier in December uh, from Cole Cracker, his, his new, uh, new shelter that he just put out. It was a pre-order, so hopefully that'll ship in the next week or two. I don't have any trips planned right now, so, you know, boom, here we go. And his shelter, should be about the same size as this roll of bank line. Um, now I've got two different bags. One I know everything fits. The other I'm going to see what I can pair out and make it fit. So let's get to look at the gear. All right. So here's a rough layout of the stuff that I have fit in the kit and still have room for the shelter piece. Um, now the first thing we're going to go over just because it's the easiest are um, what I plan on using for food and that's right here. These are the survival tabs and each of these bags is basically enough for two days. So we've got 96 hours worth of food between both of these and let's be honest if we're just needing calories this is about as thin of a way as you can go uh, when I actually go to pack this I'm actually going to untake take it out of here put it in a ziplock um, well maybe that's my ideal um, just to cut it down a little bit but sealed up as they are you know this is like 25 years shelf life so they're really really stable and not that expensive um, you know I used to do the used to have the lifeboat rations uh, when, when they were coming up on their expiration I suffered through <laughs> on a camping weekend and got rid of them um, replacing with this so my other 72 hour kit already has these in there as opposed to the lifeboat rations it came with and this is here just so you can pause and see all the nutrition stuff but you see serving size is 12 two per container 12 they're assuming 12 in one day so again two days two days so plenty of plenty of calories to get through a little bit. Now, as far as what these taste like, 
think of a very muted, um, thicker version of like the astronaut ice cream. And I don't care what it says the flavor on here is. Um, it's pretty much just kind of uh, a very muted vanilla. This one says chocolate. No, doesn't taste like chocolate. Not even the tiniest hint. There's more of a hint of vanilla and then the rest of it's just chalk. But the tablets are no larger than these pieces of uh, toilet paper here. So much more palatable um, than the other stuff. So this is the food product for the kit. And as you can see, very thin, slides in bags really well. So the next bit, we're gonna go in and we're gonna look at some comfort stuff last, but some of the stuff that I wanna get into are these little kits. And the first one is gonna be this, what I have labeled as a tiny survival kit. And this I got as a Kickstarter. I put the Ranger band on there, works well. Here's about two and a half feet, almost three feet of some uh, Gorilla Tape. And inside the tin are a few things. First is a small signal mirror. I still have the cover over it so that it doesn't uh, get all messed up. Here's a whistle, very, very loud. And this is the actual tiny survival guide. Um, really cool thing and a lot of, lot of information. I've got a whole video on this thing as well. I'm not going to go into this, but for the price, you know, if you do nothing other than use it to read while you're bored and stuck, uh, there you go. I have in here also a couple of sail needles. Um, which have since been magnetized by this. Now, this is where it gets a little fun to get the crap out. May move it to a bigger tin, I don't know. But there's a Fresnel lens in here as well as a small sharpening stone. Actually, there are two Fresnel lenses in here. So those will probably stay in there. Uh, but got a six and a thousand grit stone. Um, and as you can see from the size, great little size. This magnet is really just to keep and be able to put all this stuff back. I have not taken any of this out. I don't plan on it. Um, this kind of stuff is last ditch. Um, and when I did the Kickstarter, which is, you know, because I knew, knew the channel that did it, did the Kickstarter just to uh, give a little hand. But this was my main thing. I wanted a couple of those. I've got one I keep in a different kit. And then in this one, I plan on leaving, actually leaving this one on the bike. Um, yeah, this is... Uh, put these needles back in here. And like I said, small signal mirror small whistle. Um, whistle actually came from the, uh, I got a uh, second compass. Uh, I've got my main compass, which is MC2. I got another Suntel um, that I plan on keeping with this kit. Um, not another MC2, um, but still a good one. So that's what's in this. And this really doesn't have to be in this kit. I would take the signal mirror and the uh, whistle out and put it somewhere else. But that's what's in this little kit. It doesn't take up a whole lot of room. So let's move on to 
signaling. A couple Ranger bands again, just to keep them closed. And I've got so many of these tens that I just decided I might as well start using them more. Uh, we're gonna move some of this stuff out of the way a little bit. And let me adjust a touch. All right. So in the signal kit, this one I'm gonna put somewhere else. Uh, it's just in here for now, but we got some ribbon and a lot of this stuff in here actually came out of the signal kit I got with the uh, Graybeard Green Berets uh, tactical boot. Um, it was part of the survival kit, uh, one of the little boss bags. Here we got some reflective tape, um, which can stick somewhere. Uh, cool stuff. Ribbon. Um, these are probably going to find themselves somewhere else. These are some like white boy markers, um, just some pins you can stick into a tree. Uh, here's another whistle. Um, redundancy. This is the other compass I was talking about. And I left the cover on here, but again, Sunto. Always points true, and uh, while it doesn't have all the cool extra features of the uh, MC2, it is enough to get by. So I just wanted something that was easy to use, something I'm used to using, and here we are. And also in here is a piece of chalk and three little... Um, chemical lights and again some of the redundant stuff uh, like a signal mirror because I've already got one in here I'm probably not going to keep this one in this kit but for now hey it fits in here why not um, having a couple whistles in two different places is not a bad idea uh, just in case you get lost or you lose one or misplace or you know anything can happen and let's see if this will all well, for the most part but again it's coming in a bigger bag and that's what the uh, ranger bands are for uh, but once i get rid of that other mirror i just i need another place to put it i've got like three of them now so that's what's in the little uh, signals, signaling and navigation kit. Um, now, of course, you know, with navigation, I'm, if I'm on the bike, I'll have my phone and, you know, there's power there. So that's not a huge issue, but backup's not a bad thing. Next, we're going to go, uh, let's, yeah, let's do the first aid. And then, this is just a simple kit. Uh, I've got one that I keep on the motorcycle itself that's, you know, geared for the type of accidents that can happen and injuries you can get if you go over on a bike. Uh, but this is just some simple, simple stuff. Uh, got some Benadryl. I've uh, got six Advil, six aspirin, six Tylenol. I've uh, got some ointment, antacids, diaphan and diamode and some bandages and stuff in the bottom. And one thing that I know I've forgotten way too many times, and that's just some decent chapstick. It, chap lips are one of the most annoying, uncomfortable, always on your mind issues when you're out and don't have any. I have bought so many of these on the road because I neglected to put them in my kit. It's just not even funny. But that's the simple kind of uh, mostly medications uh, first aid kit. Um, that's just to supplement what's already on the motorcycle, which has fewer medications and more trauma. Uh, considering the injuries from a motorcycle going down. Um, we'll move into tinder, fire, uh, fire starting and stuff like that. Uh, this I'm throwing in the kit because it's 
that's why I made it. Uh, this is a simple kind of micro fire starter with some tinder. I've got the innards from um, pear tinder right there. It can be cut up and pulled apart. And inside there's a striker. A small but definitely useful um, <laughs> ferro rod. And this is some uh, some waxed, um, some kind of impregnated uh, fire tender, like lint. And then I've got a cut of wax impregnated jute. And all this stuff I've used before, so I decided, hey, let's just get a bit of this and throw it into a tiny kit. And just throw, make that into something I can throw into a larger kit which is exactly what I ended up doing. And being waterproof, once it's all done and said and done, you know, it's waterproof, this is reflective, you know, here we are. Nice little kit. Then the main fire making kit here is, we've got a larger ferro rod, much larger. I mean, this is was out six inches by probably half an inch, huge, huge, and not use this one yet, haven't had to. Um, there's a Fresnel lens. This was, I found leftover somewhere else. I don't need three Fresnel lenses in a, any kit. I don't care, um, <laughs> but there it is. So inside the actual Tinder kit itself, along with all the Ranger bands I have around all these, we have Jute twine. Oh, that smells good. Got a tea light. I have some wet fire. Sharpener for the wood. I have some magnesium tabs. And right here I have a small little Dermasafe knife. Just to augment what I've already got. But the main part of this kit is the wood, tea light, and probably the jute twine. Um, this would be a last resort if I can't get anything else going. Um, that's what the wet fire is there for. A uh, candle would probably be just to kind of kick one of those off, get them started. And jute twine is jute twine. I mean, you can do anything with it. Plus, it's a little extra portage. And most of the stuff in this tinder kit also came from one of the boss, the boss fire kit, which came with the uh, gray beard green beret stocking, uh, which was kind of cool. Kind of cool. I enjoyed a lot of the stuff that's in there. It, a lot of the stuff ended up in different kits. Um, I took the fire kit and the signaling kit apart to fill out a few things that I needed to fill out. Um, so that's fire. Fire is easy. And when I'm on the bike, I've always got my uh, pipe kit, which has a lighter, which I fill before I leave for the day. Um, has a Zippo. And it's just, you know, it's one of the things I like to do. I'll carry a small bit of a flask of bourbon and the pipe. And when I'm stopping for lunch or stopping for the day, if I'm camping, boom, guess what? Entertainment. And speak of entertainment, there's a single piece, which, you know, even with the phone and the games and shit like that, man, I, I just, I love just having some cards. And these came with something I ordered from Pathfinder School. And uh, you know what? Hey, they're not waterproof, but doesn't matter. They're gonna work, we'll keep me busy. So for lighting, I have, this is the main hand light, which is magnetic and is great. This is the Olight Warrior Mini. And it's all charged up. Uh, double hit that, puts the safety on so it doesn't come on. Um, and 
I've had this for a little bit, used it a little bit. I have not put it through its paces yet, but I've got other light O lights that I have and they are, they work wonders. So there's the handheld and then my main light, which goes um, with different kits is also an O light, the H1R goes around your head. They both charge the same way on the bottom and they, they will run forever on uh, their moonlight, which most of the time that's all I really need. But this, the headlamp goes with different kits, so I'm gonna get a different, a second one for this kit, but I just wanted to show it here. Um, and it's, it's in an old, old case. They used to have a Princeton Tech, uh, but batteries leaked and ruined it. Uh, and to go along with the lights, I've got a charge kit which has the Olight charger in there. This is this battery will charge my phone at, uh, one and a half times. I'll charge these things all the you know a number of times. Plus, I can just sit it there. I don't have to have cables to charge up the phone. So that's that. So next bit is cutting tools. Uh, we saw the one and uh, one is old trade knife I got a long time ago. Uh, when I was working at a forge and this thing, you know, doesn't have a spine, but I can make that happen easily enough. But this thing is sharp as ever. And I have put it through its paces like mad and it, uh, it just keeps working. So it goes in the kit. Um, it's the one that I can move around, the one that I can spare and the one that'll fit. And also, you know, on the side of the road, if you're using one like this, that's then, I mean, that's more, it's more or less like a table knife. So, you know, people don't feel as weird. Uh, I've got two different types of tinder. Now, if I go for a smaller bag, I'll probably leave this out, especially once I get uh, the shelter system, which already has the cordage built in. Uh, so this is just to augment, but this Kevlar cord is going to go in, uh, as a just in case. I mean, a 200 pound test, um, pretty easy uh, to throw in there. So that's going in the kit as well. Now, when it comes to water, there's a few things. Uh, like I said, I can throw this, you know, I've got a little tiny wood stove or just use fire. Um, got the cup. To boil in and I've got a container to carry and th that right there is you know for most people that that's what all they would ever need for water and you know nine out of ten times that's all I would ever need for water until well I also threw this in there because you know take it out of the fire until I found this thing and the Grail GeoPress has been phenomenal um, there's, it's just so easy, you know, I've got the Sawyer kits to put in here if I wanted to, but by the time I put all the bags and the tubing and the gray water bag and everything else, it gets too big. So if I just need water to drink, cause I have food that I don't have to cook, then this is all I need. Um, the only time it becomes an issue <laughs> is whenever I want coffee. Uh, I've always got a coffee bag in here. Uh, my favorite right now for a long while is the Black Rifle Instant. is very, very good uh, for instant coffee. Uh, three packets, three days. And then the other thing I have in here... Um, which has been awesome on bike rides is uh, vitamin C. You just throw that in your water and get a little bit of taste, get some vitamin C in there, and it helps give you a little boost. Um, and if you're out and might have an injury or inclement weather, extra vitamin C will go a long way. So just a little thing. I, I keep some of the vitamin C stuff in my first aid kit as well, 
It's just, it's that good. Um, and again, having extra vitamin C, extra nutrients is not going to be a bad idea. Uh, also with the water, you know, if I want to get and fill this up a few times, want somewhere to store it. Here's some, I've got some, uh, these came from Best Glide and they're one liter stand up bags. And uh, I think there's six in here. Maybe I've got three. Uh, this one's a pack of three. I've got a pack of six in my main kit as well. And these things are, you can't boil in them, but you can store some water in there. So if the creek is not close to running back and forth, I can fill this up, dump it in these bags, and then fill this up one last time. And I got plenty of water to make it through a night. And these things right here, <laughs> Uh, I got into using these while on the motorcycle a while back and not just for their intended use, but you know, also I've used them as fire tender. Um, you just kind of break them apart and they come apart and they get big. It takes a little extra time, but it works. Uh, and if you just burn them like this, they'll burn for a couple minutes enough to get a fire going, but just a few drops of water gives you something to clean your face off, wipe your gear down. Um, you know, I've used them to wipe the uh, face shield on my helmet. Um, and these three are just thrown in here for good measure. But I always keep a pack of 10 of these things with me. And I love the little thing it comes with. Um, that's in there just because um, it may not stay. Again, I'm, this was more to go along if I was doing this and making coffee and stuff. But... For the most part, right here is what goes in the kit, minus a, um, a bag, uh, not bag, but a um, shelter, which ends up being about that big, folded up. Um, the bag that carries everything, I know that carries everything already, is one I got a while back, and it used, I had it sitting on the bottom of my backpack, and the shelter will fit in one side. Everything fits in this bag. Um, bought it off Pathfinder School, um, the self-reliance outfitters. And, you know, like I said, everything fits in here. And the bag itself fits really well on the motorcycle. Uh, I'm going to do some pairing down. <coughs> Excuse me. Get rid of a few redundancies that are not really needed based on what I usually carry on the bike. And I want to get it into this bag. Um, smaller. Um, still gets pretty thick. So what I'm going to do is we're going to see what happens. And I might even be attaching this that will fit the grail. So I'm going to hit pause on the movie, or um, pause on the movie. Um, I'm going to hit pause on the video, see if I can pack this stuff in here, and we'll be, we'll be back. And right, welcome back. So everything ended up fitting in here with some room left over up on the top and here for the shelter. Uh, what did not go in is this case for the headlamp and I was not going to include this bank line anyway when I get the shelter I won't really need this at that point I've got the Kevlar cord in here as a just in case uh, so these two pieces were left out of this kit um, and everything went in we can see the size um, from the side and you can see the webbing here which I can put this right here and it's all in one. Uh, the other thing with this kit, which is really neat, is in the back, now it's got a nice little handle here, but you un undo that, pop this out, and you got a pocket here, which is good for like a shield or something like that. Um, got 
this right here, which goes and works with, you know, the sling. Just pop that on there. And then you've got D-rings on either side down here or over here to use as like a sling bag. So again, everything fits in here. Um, I need to do some moving around and stuff like that just to just to get it a little bit more compact. Uh, like I said, there's a few things I want to take out of those other uh, tens. And again, some of that stuff is uh, it's all fluid. You know, I change stuff out a lot. It's all fluid. So that's how it looks in this kit. And again, you know, the weight's not bad few pounds um, it's small enough to fit with you know in the back rear carrier on the bike no no big deal at all um, I didn't put this on just because I you know it'll it'll go on one side eventually I just want to figure out which side I'm gonna sling it on so but this thing works with the grail. Um, it just slides in there. And for doing a, I mean, this, hell, this bag would be even decent for a day hike or an overnight, really. <laughs> no, this is gonna be funny. It's funny how things work really well the first time. And it's the rubber bottom that was getting caught up. But I can see that that fits in there easy. You can, you can use this as a tie off for the uh, thing, but it's just a simple, simple molly pouch. Um, and I can put that on. I can even put that on this bag if I needed to. Uh, but I really got it for the bigger bag because I would just hang this off with a simple carabiner but that's it that's that's my compact kit for going on the bike and uh, hopefully maybe that gives a few ideas for others um, you know I always enjoy watching <coughs> other people build their kits because it always gives me ideas to build mine and or to pare mine down and this one i'm definitely going to be playing with uh while i'm getting things ready for the motorcycle riding season coming up in a month or so um so that this is a more viable option um i just realized that uh i need to use some tie-offs under here and i could actually fit my motorcycle emergency kit right here and it wouldn't take up more than what's right here so anyway <laughs> thoughts so let me do one more thing i'm gonna throw it in the brown bag show you what it looks like in it show the difference and um, how everything else fits and where the uh, shelter goes so we're gonna pause here one more time i'm gonna repack in a different bag and we'll be right back okay so here's everything in the other bag. And as you can see, you know, it's larger. This this pocket is empty because this is where the uh, shelter will go. But everything else is again packed nicely away. Good carry handle. Uh, and this one has a shoulder strap that hooks up here or it can be used as a belt. Um, butt pack back here um, we've got you know the molly compatible loops and rings and everything else on the back which is where and how I had it hooked up onto the backpack um, but again as I'm paring things down I was not needing I was finding nothing else to put into this pack once I had my backpack pack so this came off the backpack and this is what kind of initially started the idea of doing a uh, like a day hike or a compact um, 72 hour kit 
to just get by. Now, and again, in this kit itself, there is no actual water, but with the grail and the water bags, water's covered. Um, you have to have a source no matter what. So there we are. So that's it. Those are the uh, two bags that I have um, and have uh, been able to get 99% of the same gear in, um, leaving out some of the cordage and the, uh, the case for the headlamp. And as you can see, there's more room left in this one than I had. This one was pretty, pretty packed, but as you can see, there is, I mean, it spreads way out. Um, so a lot can go into this pack obviously since the same amount of stuff is over here except for you know I've got the cordage but I've got the Kevlar cord everything else has its has its thing so here we are two different bags same amount of stuff in each just two different form factors um, I'm probably going to focus more around this one and do a secondary uh, 72 hour kit with this and utilize the uh, Sawyer system rather than the Grail just as a you know or how maybe I'll just put the kit together and uh, take it over to dad's and let him put it in his trunk so there we are that's what we got two different bags same kit Let me know what you think. Um, I know everyone's going to have their own opinions on what has to go in, but it really comes down to two things. What you have and what you have access to. And the second is gear that you know. Um, I'm not looking to add anything else to these at this point. Uh, right now, I do believe for myself and my own knowledge, I have my bases covered for what this kit is intended. And what I'm not showing is the stuff that is already on the motorcycle that I carry all the time, which includes a full first aid kit geared more towards injuries that would happen motorcycling rather than injuries that would happen in the woods um, you got to put this stuff for what you want it for and what i have in here may not work for you and what you have in yours may not work for me but you know what that's why we make our own kits instead of just buying a pre-made ready to go well ready to go um, kit from a store so get out there, have some fun, and uh, be safe. And I hope I inspired a few ideas for, for some people. We'll talk to you later.